Hello, good day to the viewers of this video. You are in Ask Teacher J channel and for today's video, I will talk about uh, or I will discuss an example problem for a bi binary flash distillation unit uh, using uh, that will make use of a VLE diagram or a VLE data to um, determine the answers. So although... Uh, if you will search in other channels, there are some available, how do you call this? Available information related to graphical approach to solve uh, binary flash distillation problems. The common diagrams that I usually see in other YouTube channels uh, make use of XY diagrams. So although these are essentially useful um, I think in the context of separations processes course or mass transfer course um, for textbooks related to or for textbooks on thermodynamics or chemical engineering thermodynamics most of the diagrams that are you that were used uh, in some example problems are PXY diagrams and PXY diagrams. So I noticed that there are, I don't know if, if there are a few, uh, a few or, yeah, I think a few uh, were, uh, videos in the internet that make use of PXY and PXY. Actually, I did not see as far as my search searching is concerned. Uh, they only make use of XY diagrams. But how about for PXY and PXY diagrams? So this is commonly presented in thermodynamics textbooks. Okay. So now, um, I will present to you uh, one example problem. Basically, the goal here is to demonstrate the graphical approach to binary flash distillation word problems particularly in the application of the inverse lever arm rule or lever arm rule. This is a very um, common or particular, it's a very a common a way to solve uh, these types of word problems. And um, this will be demonstrated here in this video but with the use of PXY and PXY diagrams. Okay, so let's first talk about uh, the equipment under study, which is a flash distillation unit. Although this is not a separation processes or mass transfer course, uh, it would also be essential for you to uh, comprehend uh, what equipment are we referring to or we are talking to. Um, how can we apply the VLE data to the design of a separation equipment? So, a flash distillation unit basically uh, ensures that uh, the feed inlet, which is expected to be a liquid mixture, under undergoes a separation in a way that a portion of the liquid mixture becomes vapor. And of course, there is an expectation there that once that portion becomes vapor, the more volatile component is expected to vaporize and go to the vapor outlet stream. So as presented here in the screen, so the flash distillation unit takes a liquid mixture and lowers the pressure to force the formation of a vapor and liquid phase. So if the conditions of the system are to be plotted in the VLE data, it is expected that for a mixture to undergo a flash separation, the data point should be in between the bubble point and dew point curves of the VLE diagram. So this is a common mistake or I don't know, maybe, um, maybe some of the chemical engineering students are uh, how do you call this? Uh, they are just so preoccupied with the solving process without realizing that is it really worthy to solve this problem or is it just tricking us? Or um, why is there something? Uh, um, how do I know if it's worth the, 
the effort of solving a flash distillation unit. So the first thing that you have to check is if the conditions of the flash drum or the flash evaporator um, plus the conditions or the composition of the feed inlet will lie in between the curves. Okay, so I have here um, an, uh, the diagram that I will use for the um, graphical solution later. So for example, if your if the pressure inside your flash drum or flash distillation unit is here and let's say for example the composition is 60 percent and it's uh, the flash drum has a, a pressure of 3.5 bars since the data point here in the pxy diagram is in between the bubble point and dew point curves well that means that um, flash can happen flash is possible and it is expected that um, for the system to achieve equilibrium, it has no choice but to undergo or to split into two phases. So that's the first thing that you have to check. Will flash be possible given the conditions of the composition of the mixture and the pressure or the temperature of the flash drum? If yes, if it's in between the diagram or if it's in between the curves then you can uh, conclude that okay we will continue with the flash distillation word problem and it's possible to solve for the exiting streams of vapor and liquid so next a portion of the liquid mixture flashes to the vapor phase causing a separation to occur so it's called flash because because of the ad abrupt change in pressure, since the feed inlet is very, very small in diameter relative to the volume of the flash chamber. So basically, it's a very big chamber. It's an open chamber. Uh, take note that there is volume contraction here in the inlet stream. And then once it goes into the chamber, there is an expansion of volume. The expansion of volume causes the pressure to lower down, and then, of course, that leads to the um, the formation of the vapor phase. Of course, the more volatile will prefer um, the vapor phase once the pressure is lowered. So there are actually two types of flash distillation units. We have the adiabatic flash if the flash drum is insulated, and we also have the isothermal flash if there is a mechanism that is placed in the drum that will ensure that the transfer of heat is maintained or the temperature is maintained through a continuous transfer of heat. Okay, so here are the parts of the flash distillation unit. So we have here um, part number one, which is the de-entrainment mesh pad. This is to ensure that the water droplets do not go with the vapor outlet because it's possible that um, some water droplets will go with the vapor so the purpose of separating the liquid and the vapor will be defeated so the de-entrainment mesh pad will ensure that the liquid droplets are entrained and only the vapor um, molecule or the vapor phase or the vapor stream will go outside the vapor outlet the second is the inlet diffuser or distributor to make sure that um, the entire uh, chamber or the entire inlet is distributed evenly inside the chamber. And of course, the liquid level control valve is there to ensure that there is no backflow because if there is no control valve, um, it might uh, be that uh, uh, for example, you imagine this one to go inside and then of course it continues to, uh, how do you call this? It continues to fill in the chamber and once the water level goes up at a certain level, it might backflow. So this is the problem of vertical flash drum. This is a vertical flash drum, guys. 
So vertical flash drums um, are ideal for uh, systems that have that are expected to have moderate to low flow rates. Okay, but if your flow rates are expected to be very how do you call this fast or very large in quantity or magnitude, then I think the horizontal flash drum is um, viable or applicable to your case. So we have here a vertical flash drum, and so um, a control valve is necessary to, to uh, stop or to prevent any backflow. All right. So let's go to the example word problem. So by the way, I took the word problem and the image from the textbook Introduction to Chemical Engineering Thermodynamics by Dam and Visco. I do not own this image. The example word problem, I also took it from the example word problem from the textbook, but I modified the values. So I modified it a little, but essentially it's not mine. I am just using this one for educational purposes. Okay, so I am not, uh, I, and I do not own this. Okay, so let's go to the example word problem. So basically, this video is a graphical approach. So I'm using my laptop right now, and um, I am planning to, or not planning, I will be really doing a graphical approach. So, um, or if ever you will have an assessment that will make use of the VLE diagram instead of using equations, then that's a graphical approach. So I will be measuring the lines that I will be plotting here in the diagram using my ruler. So I will be pasting here, or not pasting, just um, putting my, my ruler in the screen to, you know, measure some lines. And that's basically an application of the lever arm rule or inverse lever arm rule, whichever you are comfortable with. Okay, so let's read the word problem. So a liquid mixture of R134A and R245FA, so these are refrigerants, so it's a mixture of refrigerants, contains 55% by mole of R134A. The mixture is at 6 bar and well, 293.15 Kelvin and is fed at a rate of 15 moles per second into a steady state flash distillation unit operating at 3 bars. What is the resulting composition and molar flow rate of the equilibrium streams exiting the flash distillation unit? Okay, so of course the first thing that we will do here is we are going to draw a simple schematic diagram for the binary flash distillation unit. So I will just draw here a block. Okay, the given information are the following. So we have a liquid mixture. Um, the X1 or the liquid mole fraction is 55 or 0 0.55. So basically the composition one is R134A refrigerant and the second species is R245FA. That is the second um, component in the mixture. Uh, the flow rate is um, 15 moles per second. So I will be using the okay 15 moles per second. All right. I don't like the... Let's just use the... Ah, okay. I'll be using the letter F instead. Feed. Okay. It's better. And then, this is a steady state flash distillation unit. It, is, it did not specify if it's an adiabatic flash or a, an isothermal flash. So, it doesn't really matter for the meantime since we will not be solving for the energy balances. We will just be sticking to the mass balances. And so um, that's why we need to, or I mean, we don't need to really know if it's adiabatic or isothermal. Okay, so of course, uh, there is a splitting that will happen. So the top arrow is the vapor phase, of course, because vapor, vapors, have lower densities, so they're expected to go up. 
So I place it here and then the liquid is here. So these are unknowns. Okay. So uh, let's just use Z here. Okay, this is these are the numbing uh, the following um nom the following nomenclatures are the ones that I'm used to using for this topic. Okay, this one. For V1, we need to know the vapor phase, uh, mole fraction of refrigerant 1, and of course, essentially, you will also know the mole fraction of uh, refrigerant number 2. Okay, and then for the liquid phase, we also need to know this one and Basically, we will get the value of x1 and x2 later. So z1 and z2 okay, essentially are, okay, the z2 here is basically the difference of z1, a 1 minus z1. That's basically 0 0.45. So I'll just place that one here. Okay, I'll place that one here and then let us write z2. 0 0.45 okay so of course the first step here uh, after writing the given information uh, let's place the the okay condition here three bar okay what else okay the mixture is at six bar all right okay so I think that's it so let's now look into okay the first question that you have to ask for yourself will flash happen in this case if yes then you will proceed if no then you will explain that um you will explain that vapor and liquid streams in the flash drum outlet will not be possible because flash distillation will not happen. But we need to know first, okay. So let's go to the PXY diagram. So in this case, uh, a PXY diagram is or was used by the example problem. So the given information, we have 55% by mole R134A. Okay, and then the mixture is at 6 bar. So we, we can check actually in the PXY diagram if it's really a liquid or a vapor mixture because it's also possible to have flash condensation. This is actually a flash vaporization process because the liquid enters the, the, uh, the, liquid, uh, enters the feed inlet and then a portion of the liquid becomes vapor. So if you are asking, sir, is it also possible to have a vapor mixture? Um, and then part of the vapor will become liquid? The answer is yes. It's called flash condensation. So let's check first if the 55% by mole and 6 bar is really a liquid mixture. So in the PXP diagram, if you can recall, okay, if you look at my video on understanding PXY diagrams, uh, you will find out that the ones in the upper portion, in the upper region, is the liquid phase or pure liquid phase. The ones below this uh, region here, in, the, in this region, is the vapor phase. So if your composition is 0.55%, 0.55 rather, or 55% by mole of R134, and then it's 6 bars, then you're expected to have a liquid mixture. So the problem is not lying. I mean, it's um, it's really a liquid mixture, okay? So it's actually possible to have a vapor mixture as an inlet, okay? So, but in this case, we're using a liquid mixture. Now, it's planning to lower the pressure from 6 bars to 3 bars, okay? So basically, it's a flash flash vaporization so you are going trying to lower down the the pressure to three bars here all right so the question now is will a will flash 
vaporization or flash evaporation happen? The answer is yes, because it is in between the bubble point curve and the two point curve. Okay, so in the for PXY diagrams, this is the bubble point curve, this one, the one in the upper, and the lower is the dew point curve. Okay, but in the TXY, it's different. Okay, so you have to be mindful of the assignment of the which is the which curve is which okay for a particular uh, VLE diagram. So at this point, flash distillation will happen. So I will write here in my solutions yes. Okay, yes. All right, so since it will happen, then I will proceed with my material balances or in this case, I will proceed to the mole balances. Okay. So my first mole balance is the overall mole balance. We have here the feed is equal to the vapor and liquid streams. And then I will um, use the R134A or component 1 balance. For this one or this is the component balance okay by the way so we will uh, incorporate the mole fractions z1f is equal to x1v plus oh no no not x1 y1v because it's in the vapor phase and x1l all right okay so those are your balances. We can we can actually substitute the amounts in advance. Can we do that? Is it possible? Yeah, but okay, let's just do this. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I feel kind of lazy to write. Okay. 15. Okay, we have here 15 is equal to B plus L. This is one and then for equation number two okay let's just write equation one equation one and then for this one we have it is point fifty five fifteen is equal to y one v plus x one number two what is 0. 0.55 times 15 so i have here my calculator 8.25 so i'll just write it one here 8.25 okay so we actually have a lot of unknowns here okay we have vl x1 and y1 so the reason why there is a need to use a PXY diagram, it's because you don't know or basically uh, you need to know all of those information. I mean, the diagram itself is the other equation. So the diagram itself serves as the additional uh, given information to determine the values of VL, Y1, V, and X1L. So the first thing that we can actually determine are the equilibrium compositions. So equilibrium compositions. So that's actually the first thing that you can actually get uh, from the VLE data in a binary flash distillation problem. Equilibrium composition. All right. So for this one, the conditions are for the feed, we have here three bars and 0.55 moles. No, it's 0.55. Okay, not moles. Or 55 mole percent. Did I uh, plug it in correctly? So, okay. So now, of course, it's in in the vapor liquid region 
okay so what we can do is to actually stretch that dot and create a line from that red dot towards the bubble point curve and we will also touch it in the dew point pressure curve the px1 aircraft so essentially what i am going to read okay so this is actually a very crude estimation since i'm using a digital whiteboard or i'm using a microsoft OneNote for this one so the one that you can read here this is the bubble point pressure curve okay so the curve that is in the liquid region of the PXY diagram basically will give us the value for the X1, okay? On the other hand, okay, if I go down, okay, the one that I will read here is the Y1 or the equilibrium vapor phase composition of species number one. So if we are going to read the ones that we can find below, the X1 has a value of 0 0.40, while the Y1 has a value of 246, 0 0.76. So those are our equilibrium compositions. Very easy, right? So using VLE diagram, so particularly, we are using the PXY diagram in this case. PXY. So in this case, our X1 is basically equal to 0 0.40. So of course, its corresponding X2 is 0 0.60. And for... Uh, for Y2, a uh, Y1 rather, why, am I, why is my brain loading? 0 0.76, okay. where is it? 0 0.76 and its corresponding Y2 is, and it's solved. <laughs> okay, 0 0.24. Okay, I can't do manual math. All right, so yeah, that those are the equilibrium compositions based on the VLE diagram or the PX1 diagram. At this point, we will now determine the values of uh, the liquid phase and the vapor phase. So V and L. Okay, essentially, we can actually solve for the V and the L using the information that we have. It's actually possible to do that, right? So, uh, but let's try to use the lever arm rule first, okay? Because actually, we have the X1 and Y1 already. We can just substitute the X1 and Y1 and then we will solve equation 1 and equation 2 simultaneously. That's possible. But for the lever arm rule, okay, we can actually also do the determination of the vapor and liquid streams using the lever arm rule or the inverse lever arm rule. So let's do that. For this case, for the PXY diagram, okay, let's assign. We have here, uh, let's just use the ones that is found here in the uh, X, W, and Y. So we have here W, X, and Y. For you to determine because this is the liquid region, right? And then this is the vapor region. Okay. This area here, the liquid region and the vapor region. Okay. For you to determine the liquid region or the flow rate of the liquid stream, what you're going to do is just multiply the, the value of the feed, the inlet feed molar flow rate, by the ratio of the opposite line segment to the region so what is the line segment that is opposite to the liquid phase this wy line segment is basically the opposite to the liquid so it's 
that's why it's also called inverse number arm rule because you might think na ah okay I'm I'm solving for the liquid phase I should measure the line segment x w but the answer is no you have to measure the opposite measure this length and divide that w y length to the total length of the line segment x y that's basically the fraction of the feed that is converted to liquid okay so that's 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 why it's also called inverse because you're you are measuring the inverse line segment that is intended for this region okay so i hope you were able to get that part so to get the liquid uh, mole frac uh, not liquid mole fraction liquid molar flow rate so measure the line segment w y and divide it with the length of the line segment x y so f here is basically 15 moles per second i will not write the units anymore so i will measure the line segment x y i just used my so you can use any inch any any dimension of length okay so it's you can use inches or uh, millimeters or whatever because it doesn't really matter because the units will just cancel out later so i will be using millimeters so i have here it's this 20 according to my estimations it's 25 millimeters okay and then for the xy for the total length This is around 44 millimeters. 44 millimeters. There. Okay. So if I'm going to plug it in, 15 times 25 over 44, that's basically 8.52. Okay, moles per second. Okay, I was able to get ah the eight point the the eight point twenty five. It's the amount of R one three four A. Where am I? There. So the so um uh the fifteen moles per second is the feed inlet, and then eight point twenty five moles per second of that feed is or passes through the liquid stream okay and of course to get the vapor phase you do the opposite so it's 15 multiplied by the line segment xw over xy so line segment xw over xy so of course if you are going to measure this one this will be XW Okay, my answer is around 21 Am I correct? Let's measure this again Ah, okay, 19 So 19 over 44 all right there so that will be the vapor phase molar flow rate so we have here 6.40 all right so that's it for the liquid and vapor streams okay so the question here is the resulting composition and molar flow rate of the equilibrium streams as it in the flash okay so you can actually get those values so that is the value of the liquid and vapor so the liquid here is 8.52 and 6.48 8.52 6.48 let's try to add if they are really okay it's really 15 okay that's a total 
moles per second. Okay. As for the compositions, yeah, I think it's correct already. 8.25. Okay, let me try if we are going if we will get 8.25 to ensure our consistency. So for equation two, eight point twenty five question mark uh, x one l plus y one v. Okay. Oh, I flipped the two terms. X one I got uh, I got the value of zero point forty multiplied by eight point fifty two. And uh, the y1 is 0 0.76 and 6.48. Let's see if we will get more or less the same answer as the one on the left. So 8.25 moles per second is the total molar flow rate of the component 1. So to see if our answer is correct, more or less the same, yeah, I'm actually not sure if I'm getting this right. 8.33. Oh, there is a slight difference. Okay. So, let's see. It's not equal. But the reason why it's not equal, it's because of the, how do you call this? Uh, errors related to reading the graph. reading the graph. Okay. So if you are my student of this course, uh, I won't really mind if there are slight differences uh, when you do graphical because it's expected given that um, right now I'm actually just, you know, using my screen to read the values or the 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 magnitudes of the line segments so it's expected that i will get some uh, inconsistencies another approach that you can do is to solve it uh using um, algebra so uh, you, you solve the two equations so solve equation one and two equations one and two so you might ask me, sir, are we still doing graphical? The answer is yes. Because the fact alone that you have used the VLE data to read the following values, it's already a graphical approach in itself already. Okay. So for this one, I will just substitute. So we have here 15 is equal to V plus L. And then 8.25 is equal to 0 0.40. Am I correct? No. 0 0.76 V. So I'm now using the uh, equilibrium compositions that I read in the PXO diagram. 0 0.40 L. So you can substitute, uh, you can use your equation tool in your calculator so 1 plus 1 equals 15 0.76 so my answer for the V is 6.25 okay so the one that I got here is 6.48 so I want to know the deviations so that I will know what uh, what error or not really error, uh, what deviations from my answer with respect to the answer of my students I can tolerate. 8.52 and Y here is 8.75. Oh, okay. All right, so there. So both of the answers here are valid. If you want to use this one, it's totally okay. Uh, not use. If you want to report this one, I will not mind. Uh, this is still correct for me. 
this one is also correct they have no issues uh, as to what values you are going to report okay just as long as you were able to make use of the diagram to get the following answers okay all right so i think that's it for this video um of course for the case of an txy diagram it will be different okay because for txy diagrams this is the vapor region here the one here is the vapor region well for the txy diagram is the reality region okay so you will expect that if you're going to create a horizontal line this will be the vapor phase and this will also be the liquid phase okay and the bubble point will be this one bubble point curve am i correct it's the bubble point curve and the dew point curve is this one yeah okay this is the vapor i will go down the first dew of liquid will form and then once it passes through the, the vapor liquid region all of it becomes liquid okay so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you learned something and um i'll see you in my next video bye guys